It doesn't matter if you play CSGO or not, you know about the skins. From skins you could buy cars with, to knives you never even heard about before the game. Even the most experienced player doesn't know all about skins because there is a lot that goes into it. In this video, I'm going to try and go over all the known and obscure information for beginners or people who are just trying to learn more. And hey, even if you are a market enthusiast, maybe you might still learn something here. Once you get through this video, you should know most of the important things about CS skins. The main categories I'll talk about are skins, cases, floats, patterns, and stickers and in each level I'll be going from easy, medium, and hard. The categories I'll talk about in each level will be the same but each level will get more complicated and obscure. Let's start off simple with skins. But before we start talking about skins let me tell you a way to buy and trade skins super easily thanks to today's sponsor Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a site I use quite often to trade and buy skins. It's an automated trading site that allows you to instantly trade or get new skins with a ton of skins to choose from and a really easy way to filter out skins you do and don't want. Skins Monkey also provides 24-7 live chat support and has a 5 star rating on Trustpilot. You can claim a free $5 just by trading $100 worth of skins or less if you're happy with a lower bonus. There's also a 30% deposit bonus when adding money to the site to buy skins and another 5% deposit bonus when using my promo code for a total of 35% deposit bonus. There's also a freebie section that lets you participate in daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways. Make sure to use my affiliate link and thanks once again to Skins Monkey. Now let's get back to skins. Skins are the things that go on your gun and make them look different. Usually the only way to get skins are by either a drop at the end of the game or if you open up a case. All the skins in the game are added by collections. Pretty much each time a skin is added, it's added along with a bunch of other skins. Usually in a collection there will be a bunch of common skins that go up in rarity. They're based off of colors and white being the most common and red being the rarest. Sort of. I'll get to that later. All skins you get or receive will have a certain type of exterior level on it. Factory new looking the cleanest all the way to battle scarred looking all scratched and worn. And no, using the gun in game will not make the exterior wear worse. Let's move on to cases. If you aren't dropped a gun skin at the end of the game, or graffiti, you'll most likely be dropped a case. And before opening a case, you'll be able to see the skins you can possibly get. Here's the percentages for each of the rarity from a case. To open a case, it'll be $2.49 USD, and in some US states there will be tax. And as for anything outside of the US of A, I don't really know. But once you use a key on the case, they're both gone forever, and now you watch the case roll by, and whatever you get, you get. Gambling. Depending on the rarity of skin you get, you can sell them for quite a good price on the Steam market. Floats are what determine the exterior wear of a gun. So once you get a drop or open a case, you can see the float of the gun here, and these are the ranges that will determine what wear the gun has. Most floats on guns are 1 to 0, but some are float cap. Some gun skins you can get have patterns. Dick Pattern Huntsman! Dick Pattern Huntsman! That's the Pattern Huntsman! Yes. Pretty much a pattern based skin has a giant high resolution picture that has 1 to 1000 little areas on it that will determine the pattern you get. So if I get say pattern index 58, my gun skin will have the 58th area or whatever from the pattern template on the gun. Obviously some patterns are more rare than others which I'll get to later. Right now I'm just trying to stick to the most simplest explanation. Stickers you get from sticker capsules and of course you can put these stickers on your guns in different positions. Some positions are considered better than others, I just avoid the positions you can't really see or the one on gun handles. And if you don't like the stickers, you can scrape them off. Now onto the medium level of these. The easy one was just to prep your brain for this. Skins again. Those same skins you can get from cases have a 10% chance to get this thing called stat track. Stat track counts the kills you have on the weapon and usually increases the price of the skins quite a bit. Some skins can't have stat track on them though because they don't come from cases. The collection skins that aren't from cases are either obtained in souvenir packages or from operations. I also didn't talk about knives and glove skins, but yes there are skins for your knives and gloves. Obviously some knives are better than others and usually they're more expensive. Same goes for gloves. Some are bad and some are just better and of course more expensive. Another thing I didn't talk about were trade-ups because they're quite confusing, although I wouldn't say they deserve to be in the hard section, so get ready. Let's say you want this red rarity skin. Well, most skins you can just unbox from a case or buy it, but if it isn't a skin from a case and you don't want to buy it, what can you do? Well, since each skin gets added by a collection of other skins, what you can do is risk a skin that is one rarity lower than the one you want from the same collection. Pretty much trade-up contracts are more gambling, but a little smarter. Here you can see your actual odds of trading up, and you need 10 skins of the same rarity to use in the trade-up contract. Each other skin you add, of course, adds even more chances to get skins from the different collections. So if you want a certain skin from a certain collection, it's probably smart to make sure you put more skins from that collection in there. Some skins also have less outcomes of the rarity you want, which are called filler skins. These increase your chances of getting the skin you want since there are less outcomes that could be the skin you don't want. It's a bit confusing. 
Just watch a couple of Sparkles videos and you'll get it. Let's move on to cases. When you get dropped a case at the end of the game, you'll more than likely get one of these cases. But if you're a bit luckier, you'll get one of these. Of course, the rare ones are much more expensive than the common ones. There are also cases you can't get any more like these. And since the quantity of these cases are pretty much going down every day, the prices are going up. Now onto the skins you can unbox from these cases again. The gold over here is the rarest you can get. Depending on the case you unbox, it'll determine if it's knives or gloves. Each case has a different set of knives or gloves you can get from them. Also, so each case has different skins for knives or gloves than other cases. It's a bit confusing, but you can just go on csgostash.com and look up the case you want to unbox and see what's different. Floats. The lower the float, the better the skin looks and vice versa. The lowest float in the game is this gator mesh right here. Having a nunuple or ninefold zero float. This is probably the rarest thing you could ever unbox. Even though low floats may seem like they'd be the most expensive thing, sometimes people go for the higher float guns, aka the worst looking ones. Like this op desert hydra, which gets a black scope the higher the float is. This op medusa that gets greener the higher the float is, which is called a green witch. A black amov is an op asimov where the float is so high that the normally white scope gets scraped off and becomes black, hence the name black amov. There are probably a lot more of these high float guns that I'm missing, but high float guns are probably the coolest in my opinion. Patterns. Probably the most popular pattern based skin is Case Harden, except for these gloves here which for some reason aren't pattern based. Anyways, the reason Case Harden is so popular is because of this blue section here. If you're lucky enough to get a pattern index which allows the skin to get majority blue, it's called a blue gem, which pretty much increases the price 10 times or something like that. Obviously the knife blue gems go for way more than the gun blue gems, but even the gun blue gems go for a pretty penny, especially the AK-47 blue gem, or also known as the scar pattern. There are other blue gem patterns, but the most popular is scar, because of this little scar right here. The pattern index is 661, and if you're lucky enough to unbox it from this expensive ass case, mind you, you're up about 130k, depending on the wear, and that's non stat track. There are also other patterns like this XM1014 here that the more blue leaves you get on it, the more expensive. This P2000 has a little hamster on it. This 57 has a. Aya! The JJ pattern in the back, huh? Yeah, that's a thousand dollars. And that Huntsman knife I showed earlier. This op paw pattern index 420 also has a little stoner cat right in the middle. The way patterns are determined are obviously a bit more complicated than I've shown or said, but I think you can understand it. Patterns are quite an interesting aspect of CSGO that obviously Valve got some genius to come up with because holy sh it's a lot. Also stickers again. These stickers you get can be scratched and have different scratch patterns. Some of the stickers look better scratched and some even hold Easter eggs, but don't go scratching every sticker because some stickers in the game are worth thousands, and scratching a sticker pretty much makes it worthless. Also, if you have an expensive sticker on your gun, you can expect 5-10% to of that sticker's worth to be added to the gun. So if I had, say, 4 crown foils on my gun, which are 900 apiece right now, they would add about $360 to that gun skin regardless of how much the skin itself is. Because 4 crown foils cost $3,600, and 10% of $3,600 is $360. So even if the skin is $10, you can still expect to get more money from it if you find the right buyer. Usually the cheaper the sticker is the less overpay it'll get. So if a sticker is under $100 or hell, even $500, I don't think it'd be too worth going through the trouble to find a buyer for it. Now we're getting into the more complicated and obscure stuff. Only the most well-versed and chronically online people will know about these. I'll try to simplify the complicated stuff a bit, so if what I say sounds wrong to an expert out there, I just didn't want to bore people with an hour-long video. Also, if you made it this far, please subscribe. Okay, let's get back to skins and clear up some things I missed. There are some skins in the game that will never be obtainable again. The only way to get these skins are from either buying buying existing ones or using the very expensive and also limited quantity of the lower rarity skins and trade up to the one you want and in turn risk the chance of not only not getting the super rare skin you want but also to completely delete that other rare skin from the collection out of existence. There are plenty of skins in the game that a normal player will probably never see because how rare they are. Like I didn't even know these skins existed until recently. Of course there are the iconic ones that we all know and love but there are also some more obscure ones. These collection skins are only attainable in certain operation drops or from souvenir packages like I talked about earlier, which makes the non-souvenir drop versions extremely rare to come across or to get. One of the rare skins in the game is actually the M4A1S Imminent Danger, which comes from the 2021 Vertigo collection. The only time the 2021 Vertigo collection skins were available for drop was during Operation Riptide, which was the last operation the game had. With it being so long since a new operation has come out, it's impossible to get these skins as drops now, and the only way to get them are from souvenirs. I'd assume the next operation might allow this collection to be dropped again, but who knows. The Imminent Danger is quite rare, with only 
about 350 in factory new. But what type of skin video would this be without talking about the most unusual skin in the game? The M4A4 Howl. Users Auzi and Sick submitted the M4A4 Howl in the Steam Workshop. Valve decided to add the skin into the Huntsman collection in the Huntsman case. The skin itself was a red, so it was already hard to get. But eventually Valve found out that the picture was actually stolen art. Valve then decided to take it out of the case and change the design. Since it was no longer obtainable through a case, couldn't you just trade up to it? I mean, they also took out the MAC-10 curse in the USP Orion, but you can still trade up to those now with the respective trade-up skin. Well, no. Valve decided to do something weird to it, which they've only done to that skin. They decided to make it the one and only skin that is contraband. This gives it a gold color as the rarity and makes it even more legendary to see. And because red is the highest you can trade up to, you can't trade up to the Howl, which makes the quantity super low and limited and impossible to create more. A factory new M4A4 Howl goes for about 7,500, and that's non-stat track. This is a pretty well-known skin, but how could I not talk about it? There were also other skins that were added to the game that were copyright skins, but Valve just decided to change the picture and not make them contraband. Now cases don't have too much more obscure information about them, but there are some things I still haven't mentioned. The first ever case in CSGO that was added was during the arms deal update, which was weapons case 1. There was three weapons cases which can all be opened up with the same key. The weapons case 1 has the AK-47 case harden in it, which of course you can get the aforementioned scar pattern for, so people will open this case hoping for it. But the case can actually still drop if you're lucky enough. The cases go for about $90 a pop, which is absolutely insane. Another expensive case is the Operation Bravo case, which also still drops and goes for about 60 bucks a pop. The reason this case is so expensive is because of the AK-47 Fire Serpent, which is quite expensive. Now, it may be because I'm new gen, but I don't really see the hype around the Fire Serpent. Anyways, there are actually some cases that you can't get anymore. Most of the discontinued cases are Operation cases, which I think are probably the smartest cases to invest in since they have a set amount and are solely being opened and going extinct. This is not financial advice. Let's go back to floats. I really talked about all there is to talk about floats other than a couple of things. If you go on float DB and sort by lowest float, you'll see this Karambit here with a infinite 0, 0.0 float. What's so special about it? Well, this is the legendary no star Karambit. It's called this because all knives in CSGO are supposed to have this little star next to it, but for some reason this Karambit doesn't have a star at all. There are no other knives in the game that have no star. It's also pretty crazy because it's technically the lowest float in the game, but I wouldn't consider it one. But why is it like this? Well, back in the day, if your skins got scammed, you used to be able to make a Steam ticket and Steam support would create a new skin for you and give it back to you. For some reason when this one was created, it was created wrong and has no float and no star. I'm not sure how much it goes for, but I would assume it's definitely more than a hundred grand. I'm of course no market enthusiast, but that's my safest guess. Back to patterns. The most expensive patterns in the game are the blue gems. The most expensive sale ever made in CSGO was actually a scar pattern AK-47 for $400,000. The scar pattern adding a ton to it and it being Star Trek, of course made it this expensive, but it was also the stickers on it that made it this expensive, which I'll talk about in a bit. The most expensive skin in the game that hasn't sold is this Karambit blue gem pattern index 387 factory new that's owned by a user named noob rage someone offered him 1.5 million dollars that he turned down because he thought the price was too low only one of these exists which of course allows him to pretty much pick the price out for himself but i think it's safe to assume that the price has gone up since the last offer was made people are still opening cases that have the Krambit case hardened in them trying to get lucky enough to get the pattern 387 factory new obviously no luck thus far and it'll probably be a long time till it happens now what were those stickers i was talking about earlier well they're the beloved cat Katowice 2014 stickers. These stickers on the gun add about 40 grand to it, but that's not even close to how much they go for if they weren't actually put on the gun. This sticker here is currently going for $79,000 and going up, but why would anyone pay this much for a sticker? Well, believe it or not, at one point CSGO was not popular, at least not as much as it is right now. Pretty much when the capsules were out, not a lot of people bought them, and since they're so old, there's many reasons they're going extinct. From the capsules being open, three, two, one, tight polo. To getting banned on accounts, to getting lost completely, to getting put on ugly guns, and the stickers getting scraped, the number of capsules and stickers are slowly going down day by day. Of course, the more rare something is in CSGO, the more sought after it is. There are many other expensive stickers in the game that you may not know about, but to be fair, I'd have to make an entire video on pretty much each of these categories if I were to go that in depth. I know I definitely miss a lot, and if you want people to know something, go ahead and leave a comment and maybe you can teach them something. Make sure to subscribe and like the video, and if you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a comment why, and I'll try to do better next time. Time.